DP World is a global port operator. They're well placed to assess the current state of global trade and tensions. John Deft Harris has been speaking to the group chairman about trade wars, US investment and opportunities in Africa. Listen in. Sunrise over Dubai. We're at one of the busiest ports in the world. DP World is an impressive 24-7, 365-day operation. Its impact on this city's economy is enormous. Handling more than 15 million containers every year, this port and logistics-free zone, which hosts more than 7,300 companies, makes up 35% of Dubai's entire economy. It has international reach with port operations in over 40 countries across six continents. The man behind it all is Sultan bin Sulaim. First up, the ongoing trade war between the United States and China. Anybody can sell anything to America from anywhere in the world, while other markets might not be as open. So I think with the administration of Trump today, they are telling the world, not just against China or anybody, my market is open, you better open your market for our products. And unless you open, we're going to take retaliation action. It seems like you justify what President Trump is doing against China in particular. They need to open their market. I think not only uh, China. Many countries should open their market. Look at Dubai. What made Dubai so important as a trade hub? The growth of Dubai from a small fishing to a major global trade hub only came because we had open skies for the airlines. We have not given advantage to Emirates Airline. We have opened our market. We have chosen to charge the minimum customer duty. So free trade is a good recipe. America practices free trade. That's why you see many innovations in the United States. So I'm not justifying. I'm just saying that countries should be fair with each other. Uh, back in 2006 and 7, you were interested in investing in the United States. There was almost an Arab paranoia after 9-11. We've seen a couple of port deals go through in the United States. Does it tempt you to go into the largest economy in the world and set up port operations yourselves now? Actually, we, look, we always look at the United States. In America, we are welcome. The question is, can I find a profitable operation in the state? Can I find a port operation that is going to be profitable for us. At the moment, we looked at many opportunities, but really we haven't seen anything that is in line with our investment criteria. DP World is making a sizable venture into Africa. With operations in nine countries, it's betting big on Ethiopia. With a population of more than 100 million, it projects that this landlocked country requires up to 12 ports to service its growth over the next few years. Therefore, it broke ground last week on a $442 million port investment in Somaliland. But its foray into Africa hasn't been without difficulties. In February, the government of Djibouti seized DP World's operation there. Despite an international court ruling that DP World's contract was valid and binding, the Djibouti government continues to control the port and, more importantly, the revenues. Somaliland is an interesting place. It's a safe country and it has potential because it's on, on a very important maritime route. It's at the mouth of the Red Sea into the Arabian Sea. So we see big potential there for cargo. Do a lot of people underestimate Ethiopia and the world? It's going like 10% and a market of better than 100 million consumers. It can't be overlooked as an economy in its own right. No, it, it can't. And actually, all of us remember Ethiopia famine. Everybody talk about it. A fertile country with all kind of means of production, and yet there is famine. So there have been huge projects in Ethiopia to develop production. Today, they, they, based on their plans, they will have about 20% growth. You think it's of uh, strategic importance to be in Africa for Dubai and the UAE as a trading nation, but the lack of governance must frustrate you, and you got burned in Djibouti. This is the reality as they seize the operation. So what Djibouti has done is damage the reputation of Africa as a whole. We're not worried about uh, Djibouti. We made enough money and we're happy of what we made, but it's a matter of principle that government should respect international laws, they should respect their commitment. Today they do this to us, 
Tomorrow, if they find oil offshore, nobody will touch it. You can't. If, if you do this to deep oil, you can do it to anybody. And we need them to realize that.